My name is Christoph. Welcome to the Quixotry workshop. As promised, uh, we are starting a new project and uh, in one of my previous videos what is a paper beater you can see in the de description a link to that video if you haven't watched it already you can watch it watch it before you look at this video I've got a, a client that requested me to, to build another one of these machines and I want to take you along with the whole process from the design of, of it and getting the parts uh, turned into flat flat sheet parts, laser cutting parts, uh, getting it welded up, uh, assembling everything, all the engineering behind it and I hope you enjoy this little series of uh, how to build a paper beater and at the end of the series I'll also, I'll give you links to, to all the, uh, the materials and things that I used and as well as an option if you want it, if you are interested in getting the files from me, you can also contact me uh, that way. I'll make it available uh, for sale. Yeah, you can see uh, I'm busy on, on my program. Uh, it's a 3D modeling program. It's called Rhinoceros and I've been uh, using this program for many years and I found it's for me it's very user-friendly and one of the, uh, the most easy programs if you wanted to do this type of thing where you build something in 3d on a computer and getting it out into reality I know there's a lot of other programs like SolidWorks and AutoCAD Google SketchUp and many more. <clears throat> some of them are very expensive and some of them are free. And this one is not free, but you can download a, a free version that's, uh, that you can use for three months, um, fully functional. If you look in the description of the video, there's some links there. Um, I highly recommend this program. They're not sponsoring me or anything. Uh, it's just one of the, the things that I use almost every day. So uh, the, the early stages of this, um, there's a lot of uh, development going into this. But the previous one that I built was, was larger. So I had to scale everything down and make sure that it still works out with, with the hardware that I'm using. Um, the hardware being the motor, the pulleys, uh, the bearings, um, and, all, and all of the, the gears and things that, that I can't scale down. So basically, in this, this one, <coughs> this one's capacity, about a 90 litre uh, tub. And uh, here you can see uh, all the parts being turned flat. Um, so that I can have a profile of each part and after double checking and checking if everything's there and right um, I send this off to the laser cutters to, to get a quotation and then based on the quotation um, I make modifications if I need to to make it to, to fit within the budget um, and I also can quote my client accordingly so to get prices on, on each component and each part is, is quite a mission, but it's the only way to accurately calculate what it's going to cost to build this. So here's the, the final quote that I got from the laser cutters. And I ordered the parts and now I just need to wait for them to cut it. Um, they cut it via a fiber laser. Um, We've got various machines. The footage here is not of the actual machines that I use, but it's just something I got um, 
just to explain to you what the process entails. When they receive my files, they have to um, check everything um, and make sure that it imports correctly uh, according to the scale. They need to offset the machine to cut um, either on the line or on the side of the line or um, whatever uh, to, to get the right tolerances. And they also nest it um, together with various other parts of other clients so that they can have a full sheet um, cut of, of each thickness of material um, to optimize it on their side. And then it takes about five to, to seven work days for it to be cut. And there's also some bending involved. So some of my parts, and luckily they also have the facility to bend everything. I send them the drawings, how I want it bent. And after it's been cut, they bend it, put everything together and deliver the parts. So um, after the parts have all been cut and delivered, I need to get them uh, welded up and assembled. As well as getting all the other hardware and things together. Um, next week, I'll show you what the parts actually looks like after they've been cut and then also a little bit about the welder that, I'm, that we used to weld this together and the, the processes involved of rolling. Some of the parts need to be rolled, some of them need to be still uh, bent by hand and shaped to fit. I also need to, to collect the, some of the parts that need machining and I'll also take you through that process. So I hope you enjoyed this video. That's all for this week. Please like and subscribe and have a great week. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Thank you.